Saturday uh, from 2.30 onwards will be the uh, Tower Tours and Tea, to which you're all welcome. And uh, I understand it's advertised uh, widely, at least across the email group, the Facebook site, um, and in various other places. Uh, and so please do tell your neighbours and friends about the Tower Tours um, uh, on Saturday 2.30 onwards. Um, also on Thursday, uh, my wife Sarah and Judith Mitchell are leading a circular walk um, Thursday, 9.45, leaving from the lay-by outside the Grangefell Golf Club, walking towards Anakwait uh, and back again. I'm not exactly sure where they're going, but um, again, you are all welcome to that. I read the bands of marriage between Lucy Wilson of Swarthmore and Alverston and Mark Storey of Swarthmore and Alverston. Uh, this is for the third time of asking, and if anybody knows any reason in law why these persons should not be married, they should declare it now. We begin by singing together our first hymn, O Worship the Lord in the Beauty of Holiness, number 89, and we omit verse 3, number 89. Against us, 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom our hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. <clears throat> On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she has, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 65. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation who did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices a people who provoke me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains, and reviled me on the hills. I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in a cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So will I do for my servants sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah inheritors of my mountains. 
my chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Second lesson comes from Galatians, <coughs> chapter 3, verses 23-29. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be testified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized unto Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed? And as according to the promise, thanks be to God. Thanks again. Let us sing our gradual hymn in number four hundred and ninety-seven. Let all the world in every corner sing. Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, 
but he would but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. About three years ago, I took my uh, two daughters to see the film The Greatest Showman, uh, which is loosely based on the life of Phineas Taylor uh, Barnum, who in 1871 created what would become the Barnum and Bailey Circus. It's a great combination of catchy music and dance moves, uh, a love story that has mean parents getting in the way. Success is through sheer grit and determination, Precious friendships are made, and several characters are the clear underdogs who overcome all the odds against them. One of them is born with a deformity, another is a giant, another is a man tattooed from head to foot, and each of them suffer the abuse of others who think that they are more normal and who justify their cruel actions against them. Of course, there wouldn't be a story worth watching if there wasn't a hiccup now and again. Uh, and about how Phineas treats his family and his friends. Uh, but overall, it's evident that he cares not for what society determines as acceptable. He loves whatever the cost and regardless of what is deemed to be right. In our Gospel reading this morning, we meet a man who goes by the name of Legion. 
Of course, Legion was not his real name, but a description of what had happened to him, a name that had been given to him by so-called normal people. He was a man whose mental and spiritual disturbance was extreme. We don't use the word demon very often today, but our ancestors used it to describe those forces in life that seemed to have a power of their own. And the man in the Gospel knew what was going on. He knew that there were these powers at work within him that he was unable to control. This is a man who had been tormented by these demons and by the disruption they caused. The local people banished him and drove him away and were left with a description of his nakedness, his supernatural strength, his home among the tombs. Luke's report of this healing of Jesus is a precious gift to us today for it's about our mental health. Our mental health is a collection of people. It demonstrates that mental health cannot be thought of or treated as a problem of which individuals have alone, something they have brought on themselves and must face in isolation. Now, the healing of the Gerasene demoniac drives home the truth that our mental well-being is in fact a community effort. The name Legion was a label that helped enslave this poor man whom Jesus encounters. It's a label in just the same way that is on uh, many lips today. The word migrant is a label. Mad is a label. Muslim can become a label. Even beautiful names, which should be the words of dignified and descriptive freedom, can all too easily be turned into labels which demean, which diminish and enslave when uttered by those who seek to create division and hatred. So in our reading today, Jesus arrives in the country of the Gerasenes. And how lucky for this man to have an encounter with Jesus Christ, the one who can unbind him, the one who can cast out his demons, whatever they were, and set him free. Jesus comes unafraid of death, all the tombs in which this man lived. He's not distracted by the man's behaviour. He's not repulsed by his nakedness or appearance. He is not limited by the chains that bind this man's life. He simply comes and drives the demons out, returning the man to his true identity and setting him free. The most catchy of the songs in The Greatest Showman is the one entitled This Is Me. Look out, because here I come, and I'm marching on to the beat of the drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me, the song goes. No matter the size, the shape, or the colour of those in his life, Phileas sees each of the characters in the film for who they are, and gets celebrating it. Trouble a man with constant messages about his looks, his shape, his image, and you're filling him with demons. Tell him, show him that he is loved and valued absolutely just as he is, and you are both beginning to grasp the wonder of abundant life. Freedom is wonderful. Liberation is wonderful. Removing the stigma and prejudice of a label is clearly a good thing. But even more wonderful than that is encountering Jesus. It's not enough for the man in our reading to stay at the feet of Jesus, having been set free. Jesus wants more from him, and sends him away, saying, Return to your home, and declare how much God has done for you. That's the challenge that this Gospel sets, not only for its subject, but also for you and for me. Every member of our society longs to be clothed and in our right mind. And as a community, we can help to bring this healing with every opportunity we take to challenge those attitudes which put demons into us all. In every moment, we choose to live graciously towards others in response to all that God has done for us. So as we reflect on labels, on prejudice, uh, on what we've been challenged by in our Gospel today, let's just have a moment's quiet and see the ways in which we can bring back into whole our communities 
uh, where prejudice is uh, rife. So, Heavenly Father, we pray that you would set us and all your people free, that we may all know our true identity in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for all who helped to bring healing and peace to our world. And we pray for peace in our world, within our communities, and in our hearts and lives. In the Worldwide Church, we pray today for the Anglican Church of South Sudan, and for their Bishop Justin Arana. Within our own diocese, we pray for Bishop James, as he presides over a service in the cathedral today. And ask for your blessing upon the ministry of all our churches across the Carmel Peninsula. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to, taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty. Perceive by continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, especially thy servant Elizabeth, our queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine Set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all men who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We sing together our offertory hymn in number 585, The Church's One Foundation. <coughs>
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. 
Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God our Father, and in earth peace with the will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We sing together our final hymn, number 589, The King of Love, My Shepherd is, number 589.
surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.